Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. Church, your neighbor say, you look beautiful this morning. Turn to someone else and say, it's because she's sitting next to me. Or he. And to all our fathers out there, starting with our dear, near and dear to our heart, Pastor Dad, happy Father's Day. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you excited to be here this morning? Somebody shout glory. Glory. You can do better than that. Somebody shout glory. Glory. Let's go. Say, I'm a champion of God. Say, I have the life, have the life and nature, nature of Papa God. Say, greater is he, greater is he that's in me, that's in me than he, he that is in the world. In the world. Say, I spread my wings, spread my wings like, eagles, like eagles and I soar above. I soar above. Say, I'm shining. I'm shining. Say, I'm spreading my wings spreading my and I'm raining in life like a king go ahead and nudge your neighbor stand to your feet and let's go ahead and praise our father this morning
go ahead and lift your hands and worship him. And right where you're at today, just go ahead and speak in the spirit. How many of us know that the Lord loves us? You didn't have to be righteous for Him to love you. The Bible says, For God loved, so loved the whole world that He gave His only begotten Son. In sin, God gave His only begotten Son. That whosoever believeth in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And we love to say that that's everlasting life in your finances, in your health, in your families, in your businesses, on the football field, in school. Everlasting life. why I love fellowshipping with the Lord and that's why I know you love fellowshipping with the Lord he's a peace in the midst of the storm a peace that the world can't give but he's the peace in the midst of the storm he's the air that we breathe hallelujah he's the bomb of Gilead the rose of Shari As we worship the Lord, just continue to pour your heart onto Him. Be anxious for nothing. Not concerned about tomorrow. Not concerned about what happened yesterday. Give it all to the Lord, for He cares about you.
it's so good to see your beautiful faces. And sometimes I can't say this because my daughter always beat me to this line. So, but it's okay for me to say it because I know I was the first to say this. So, <laughs> it is so good to see your beautiful faces. Turn to your neighbor and tell them you look beautiful this morning. Turn to your other neighbor and tell them with feelings you look beautiful this morning. So if, you're, if this is your first time visiting Message of Peace, we want to welcome you all. Welcome, welcome, welcome in the mighty name of Yeshua, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And uh, before I go on to our devotion for today, I want to just recognize some people that are in the house. Some are VIP. So if you feel like a VIP today, you are a VIP. Say, I am a VIP. I am. But I apologize if I don't mention your name. So with that said, I want to recognize... Uh, Pastor John and his lovely wife, uh, Emma Toilolo. They're from Great, uh, Great Life Church. Thank you for joining us. And I also want to recognize uh, some of our prayer warriors that work with us on the reach out. Uh, Brother Wayne Nakamura, Cindy Lee. Thank you again. You guys are always welcome here. And uh, I want to recognize, I know it's not for, uh, Mother's Day, but I want to recognize these two ladies that came to the that joined us today. Uh, we all know that from Samoa, I think they just opened up the flights, if I'm not mistaken. I had to talk to the president of the Hawaiian Air, so finally they opened it up today. And we're here with our, our two aunties, our Auntie Malama and Auntie Saman. They just came from here, from Samoa. And I think that was the same flight my sister then went back home, so praise God. You know, although we, we look at it as a business, but truly, the hand of God was in in this uh, moment right now because you're not here by accident you are here by a divine appointment say that's me because I truly believe there's a word in season that's you're gonna hear today that is gonna impart and impact your lives that's gonna make things happen around you praise God and of course I want to recognize my mom She had, she, she's been uh, missing in action because she was watching on, online. Yeah, she's a, my mom is very gifted in, uh, she's an IT person. Very good at computers. She loves her Facebook, social media. She can't post, but she reads everybody's posting. So be careful what you write. <laughs> and also my brother in the house, uh, Fata, Chief Fata. Uh, Mosa, thank you so much. And also my uh, friends that I have invited, my coaches, thank you for being here. And the rest of our Ohana family over our congregation, how's about a big hand for yourself? Amen. Did I miss any VIP? Oh, Brother Derek is looking at me. <laughs> you too, Derek. But before I start, Happy Father's Day. To your Amen. neighbor, tell him Happy Father's Day. Happy Father's Day. Today's going to be the best day. I think today, Father's Day is, is better than Mother's Day. Let me tell you that. So, so with that said, if you have a, if you need a Rhapsody Reality, please raise your hand. And then we'll hand it out to you. You can follow along. Today's day, June 20. Well, it's halfway through the year already. So the title for today's uh, devotion it says, trust and boast in his name Colossians 3 17 reads and whatsoever you do in word or deed do all in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to God and the Father by him in 1 John chapter 5 13 John writes these things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God so if you're looking at the Rhapsody, there's an underlying portion of that verse that I just read. It reads that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So it simply means to put the name of Jesus to work. So I'm putting the name of Jesus to work. So his name is your access to every city and every nation. It's your guarantee of consistent victory and unending blessings. The name of Jesus is bigger than the whole world. 
Philippians chapter 2 verse 10 says at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth so that name is named upon you say it's on me this is the reason you can be unruffled and at peace in any city region or nation irrespective of the adversary or adversities that you might face his name is your security amen so Solomon had an idea about this and said in Proverbs 18 10 Solomon said the name of the Lord is a strong tower the righteous run it into it and is safe that was in the Old Testament but check this one out say today we don't run into the name of the Lord we were born in him see that's me we have inherited his name so we live in and by his name hallelujah this was what Peter and John knew acted out when they healed the lame man at the gate of the temple called beautiful they put the name of Jesus to work the man was crippled from birth but Peter fastened his eyes on him and said in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth rise up and walk turn to your neighbor and tell him rise up and walk tell him again rise up and walk tell him again rise up and walk I was waiting for somebody to rise up but we're all risen amen the bible says peter grabbed him oh that's why they never rise up you gotta grab him grab him by the arm yanked him up and instantly his ankle bones received strength maybe today your finances your job your business is in a crippled state you gotta grab him by the hand yank it up yank up that finances yank up that relationship yank up that business in the name of our lord jesus christ are these are there doors that seem to have been shut against you put that name to work say i'm putting the name of jesus to work so unlike your own name say i love my name but i think there's a better name than your name or any other name the name of jesus can be trusted the psalmist said in Psalm 20 verse 7 some trust in and boast of chariots and some horses some of horses but we will trust in and boast of the name of the Lord our God so it doesn't matter the challenges it doesn't matter it doesn't matter what you might be facing in your finances or even in your health we got to put the name of Jesus to work if it's a pain or a growth in your body commanded to the materialize in the name of Jesus and it shall be so his name is a name you can trust say I trust the Lord I want you to put your hand to your heart and I want you to confess this over yourself now, over yourself so repeat this after me say I live above the devil I live above sickness I live above diseases and all the advers adversities of life because I live in and by the power of the name of Jesus. I'm living the higher life of glory prearranged for me in Christ. And the righteousness of God is established through me in my world. In Jesus' name. Jesus. Let's just bow our heads, close our eyes. Let me just pray. Father, we continue to honor you. We thank you for this Father's Day. We thank you for every soul that's in the house. Father, truly that they came with things. Some of them came with things. But truly, Father, we feel the presence of you, Holy Spirit, in this place. Thank you for your glorious righteousness in here, Lord, that have taken away some of those thoughts, some of those feelings. Whatever the adversary is trying to come against us, Father, Lord, we know that in the name of Jesus that we just read, in your name, Father, as we put the name of Jesus in action, Father, all those things have been taken away. Thank you, Father, for cleansing us. We thank you, Father, for giving us that word, imparting in our lives that we can feel you, Spirit, being so close to us in the midst of everything that we're going through. Lord, we are well. We feel your peace in us today. Father, today is Father's Day. We celebrate today with every father that met 
a lot of things to their families, you know, to this community, to this island, but especially, Father, every Father that have partaken in everything that he does for ministry. Father, it's all about sharing the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, and all fathers here, Father, have, you know, performed that task, that duty, that job. And they have taken it so seriously, Lord, that because of you, Lord, the love that they have shared through your name, through the gospel, they have shown and have displayed it, you know, out there. Lord, we thank you for their hearts. We thank you for everything that they are doing for you, Lord, to share the love of Christ, that it can be a part of every family, centering their, their thoughts, centering everything that they do in that love of Christ. Father, we share that love today. In everything that we do today, Father, we appreciate your love. Father, we lift up our governments. We lift up our president. We lift up our governor. We lift up those who you have put in high places, making them a, you know, a part of uh, allowing the Holy Spirit, Lord, to touch their hearts in every decision that they have made, Lord. Let it be all Holy Spirit-led. Father, you are wisdom, you are knowledge, and you bring forth great understanding to them. We lift up our military, Father, those who are fighting, those who are protecting our freedom, our American nation, Father. We lift up them, them. we lift up every uh, leader that is in charge of every company, every platoon, Father. Give them wisdom, Lord. Give them wisdom. Give them a day, Lord, that they will be back home with their loved ones that are awaiting their presence in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We lift up those who are in the hospital, those who are in prison. Father, we pray your comfort over them. We pray your understanding, but especially, Father, we pray your word and the name of our Lord Jesus Christ in them working through them and giving them peace and rest father we thank you today again we thank you for this father's day and we pray this in the mighty name of jesus and we all say amen and amen go ahead and focus your attention on the screens we have a short video for you touchings and i am the director of education for Global Awakening Ministries. I also am the president and founder of God Heals PTSD Foundation. I want to tell you the story of how I met Jesus in a very significant way. I was blessed to have parents that took me to church as a child, and I was in church and uh, on Sunday mornings, attended Sunday school and learned all about the Bible. I went forward uh, in my church at the age of 13 and was baptized. But the reality of my life was that although I followed uh, everything that I was supposed to do to be uh, a Christian, uh, my life, my behavior, and even the state of my heart uh, didn't seem to be transformed in a way that I really lived out a consistent life. And so I kind of lived the life of a Sunday Christian where uh, we worshiped God and we did the right things on Sunday, and then throughout the week just lived like the rest of the world. That's okay when you're a child and even sometimes when you get into older uh, childhood, but as a teenager and later on in college, I began to follow a really dark path where God really wasn't part of my life. I would not let anybody else know about it, but uh, I was involved in a lot of things that brought bondage, that brought me to a place of uh, real despair, uh, feeling like I had no purpose. I remember a number of occasions where after bouts of, of drinking and uh, after bouts of just doing things that certainly I'd never been raised uh, to be part of, I found myself at a place of not seeing myself with any future. I had dropped out of college because I didn't see any purpose of, of going to school anymore. I uh, began a, a job in radio and I was uh, uh, on the radio broadcasting and selling advertising time. I was in that place of uh, just living a life that was all about working during the week and partying on the weekend that only brought more hopelessness and despair to me. And you know, you come to that place where you say, God, is this it? Is that is all that there is? And I remember having very strong thoughts of just ending my life, maybe taking my car and driving it off a bridge or into a tree. Of uh, thinking of ways how I could uh, just end my life in a way at age 19 that were just constantly coming at me. And one day uh, I can remember after a weekend of hard partying and realizing I had to go to work, I came to the place that I just cried out to God and I said, God, if this all life is, then I don't 
I, I don't want to live this kind of life anymore. What do I do? And I can remember hearing in my mind the voice of the Holy Spirit speak to me and say, Mike, you've been living a lie for all of your life. And I was, it shocked me because I'd really never heard. It was kind, it was sweet, but at the same point, it was, it was really powerful. And I began this dialogue with this voice in my mind. What, what do you mean I've been living a lie? And as it grew stronger, it became stronger in my mind, even than the voice of suicide. Because many of you know who've had suicidal thoughts, it comes as a voice to you and sometimes disguises itself as your own voice, as if it's your own thoughts. And I realized what was happening at that moment, that I was hearing the voice of God calling me to his original purpose for my life, his original dream. And I said, well, J Jesus, I understood it was Jesus. I said, Jesus, what do you want me to do? I don't know how to change. And very clearly in my mind, I heard him say, son, that's my business. It's not your business to change. It's my business to change you. It's your job just to give me your life, to call me Lord and let me be the boss of your life. And when I become the boss and Lord of your life, not only do you live in my love and power, but I will do all that I need to do to change you into the person that I dreamed you to be. And at that moment, I got flat on my face in my, in my bedroom and I cried out. I said, Jesus, have your way in my life. Change my life in such a way that I don't have to live in this kind of torment any longer. I want to tell you a couple things that happened the very next day that that took place. I lost all appetite for drinking and partying. I mean, it just like ended in my life. Secondly, uh, I had developed a really foul mouth. You know, I, I lived in a home that we never heard a curse word. We never took the Lord's name in vain. And yet I developed a lifestyle where I was using every, I, I swore like a sailor. And it was like overnight, all of a sudden, those words weren't part of my vocabulary anymore. There came such a passion for God and such a love of His Word that I began to read the Bible. I began to pray like I'd never prayed before. I mean, I would pray over my meal, pray for grace, but there, there really wasn't that sense of a lifestyle of prayer. And as I began to just say, okay, Jesus, you're the boss, show me what to do today. I would literally, he, he taught me how to talk with him when I got up first thing in the morning. And one, of the, one of the things that was the most difficult thing for me to break through was the sen sense of shame, of guilt and condemnation that I felt all the time because of all the things that, that I had done in the past, the ways that I had gone against the teaching that I had as a child. And I can remember for days after that, I would keep hearing these lies of shame and guilt and condemnation coming my way saying, you know, you'll never be the same. You'll never get over this. And I remember getting on my knees before Jesus every day and saying, Jesus, I don't know how to deal with these. You've got to deal with them. And slowly but surely, as I let the Word of God come into my heart, as I began to, to pray more and just seek His face and feel His love, those lies of shame, guilt, and condemnation began to fade. And all of a sudden, I came into such a, a wonderful place of just experiencing the love of the Father, to know that He created me to be a beloved son. And, and one of the craziest things for me was that even though I was in a process, understand, I didn't lose the, the, the ability to sin. I still missed it. I still uh, went the wrong way sometimes. But I always felt the Father's love calling me back to Himself. And one of the craziest things about this was that I began to hear Jesus saying to me, you are my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. And I realized that God's perspective of me, how he looked at me, was not according to all the bad things that I had done and even the times that my weakness took control. His perspective on me was the way that he looked at me through the eyes of Jesus and that Jesus saw me as a beloved son of whom he was going to do some amazing things for as well as through. 
ask. So I just want to say, out of my story of encountering Jesus and him breaking shame, guilt, and condemnation, and literally taking me to a place that I could declare, I am a new creation in Christ. The, all the old has passed away. All things have become new. That I came to really to understand clearly the grace, the love, and the power of this amazing Father that as He sent His Son, Jesus Christ, to remind me of the purpose for which He created me for. And I want to say to you today that if He did it for me, He can do it for you. So just welcome Him into your life today, no matter what you've done. He doesn't look at that. He looks at the amazing dream that He created you for. So right now, in Jesus' name, I pray for you to welcome his presence into your life and his grace and power that brings transformation in Jesus' name. You need help. Shalom, family. So great to see you all. I see mom over here. Um, so honored to have you, brother. He's, he's so wonderful in our lives. And also we have Brother Junior. We thank you, all our visitors. So happy to see all your beautiful faces. Let's go ahead and pray. Let's welcome in the Holy Spirit. Father, we just thank you so much for your grace, your love, and your mercy. Barak HaKodesh, you are the teacher this morning. You are a comforter. You are also our intercessor. We thank you for preparing the hearts of your children to receive the word in their mind that they may understand. I thank you for anointing my tongue that every word that has been spoken this morning, it is like a pen. Their heart shall be like a tablet. You will write unto the tablet of their heart as well as they will plow up the fallow ground, removing any pebbles, any stones, and any rock so that the seed of the word that they will receive will fall on good ground. And I thank you, Holy Spirit, Alos Paracletos, when they leave this morning the word of the father will be in their heart and we rebuke the work of the enemy that come to steal that word and that great revelation that is given to them we pray this in the matchless name of Yeshua and the saints of God say amen amen amen, amen. somebody shout glory. glory well thank you all you all look so beautiful you look wonderful this morning. Truly, the glory and the grace of God is shining ever so brightly onto you on this perfect day. Well, it is Father's Day, and we also have a Torah word for this session, but what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take um, a part of that word and try to integrate it so that it sort of connect with Father's Day. One thing I don't want to miss, and I don't want you to miss a good word. We had a great word yesterday for our Torah session. Every Saturday, uh, we meet for about two to three hours just studying the word besides Tuesday. I had a phone call from a good friend after our Torah session, and she said, Pastor Ariella, so Ariella is my Hebrew name that we were ordained by, um, by rabbi. And so she said, Pastor Ariella, um, I, I meet with our women's fellowship every Tuesday, but my question to you, because I've been hearing you um, in part during our Torah session, and she said, my question to you is when we meet with these women's every Tuesday, they they all come with problems. They're all challenged with other problems at their homes or with their children or within the neighborhood, their community. And she's like, you know, we talk about that and then we pray. And so she said, what would you do? Is there any input that you would like to share with me that I can take back um, to our uh, session on Tuesdays with the Women's Fellowship? And so I shared with her, I said, that's really easy. First of all, do you give them substance? And she said, what do you mean substance? I said, do you provide substance to these women? Because, I mean, it's fine they can share with you problems, but you have to provide substance. You have to give them the word because it is the word that will help you to conquer and it's a word that will help you to be catapulted to the next level of any challenges that you may have. Without the word, you're just going to keep repeating that same problem over and over. The word has to be in your spirit. The word has to be in your heart. It has to be dissected. You have to understand the word in order for you to use that word to conquer those challenges that you're going thorough and she said I never thought about it that way I said really everything we share it's about the word it's the word is the word Pastor John what an honor to have you and Pastor Emma thank you so much we're humbled to have you both here so with, with that say I want to put on the first slide because the Torah word for this week it's called hukat 
But instead of hukat, we're taking out hukim. Can you all say hukim? And on that slide that you will see, hukim um, are statues that are given without reason. And for example, they are sometimes called supra-rational decrees. Hukim is something that God commanded to do, but it doesn't make sense. It's irrational. It's illogical. I mean, for example, if you have problems that you're going through and you just can't put your hand down on it because you have no idea, it doesn't make sense at all. It's irrational because you're reasoning, you're trying to focus and try to, you know, make sense of it. So it's called hukim in Hebrew. So hukim is reasoning, but hukim is one of God's commandments. So let me give an example of hukim. So when Abraham was called and God said to Abraham, Abraham, take your son, Isaac, and sacrifice him. Now, that is hukim because what in the world would a man who's like 100 years old has his only one and only begotten son that he is going to follow through with what God has directed him to do and sacrifice his own son? That is hukim because it's illogical, it's irrational, it doesn't make sense why he has to do what he needs to do. But Abraham, for those of you, if you do a deeper study, Abraham has studied 613 commandments. In the Old Testament, there is 613 commandments, much more than the 10 commandments that we all know. So there's 613, and according to the sages and the Jewish um, commentary that Abraham loved God, they studied. So the Hebrews and the Jewish people, they study these commandments. They study the laws and the rules of God. And so as he studied this, it builds up his faith. He just no, 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 without, without a doubt at all that God will somehow deliver. Even though it doesn't make sense that he has to sacrifice his son, his only begotten son at the age of, you know, of 100, but he knows that by faith, that somehow God will deliver, okay? So that is what hukim is, okay? That's what that definition, uh, basically what it is. So now, what I wanna go through, and let me call out a scripture, uh, Genesis 26, and I'm taking this from your um, ESV. This is an English Standard Version translation, Genesis 26, verse five. So if you don't have a Bible, what do we say? Sell your house, sell your car, sell everything that you have, and go purchase a Bible. One day, the internet's not going to work, but you have your Bible that will back you up. Always wonderful to have your Bible, and it's so good to be hearing you flipping your pages, right? That way you understand the Old Testament and the New Testament. And if you have your paper and your pencil, you can start taking notes. So Genesis 26, verse 5, from English Standard Version. And if you have it with you, let's read it together. Because Abraham obeyed my voice and kept my charge, my commandments, my statutes, and my laws. So that solidified and confirm that Abraham studied 613 commandments, all the Old Testament, also known as God's instruction, the Torah. So it was easy for Abraham. So Abraham's faith led him to surrender his reasoning um, in complete devotion to the Lord. Abraham's fear and trembling represent the antithesis between faith and reasoning. Now, humanly speaking for us, right, humanly is we tend to try to make sense out of things. And if it doesn't make sense, we're not going to go forward with it. That's just the human. We were born that way. And so the word says that when you make Yeshua your Lord and Savior, your thinking has to be changed. Your thinking has to be transformed. No longer that you think the old way because the word says you are now a new creature. You are a new creation in Yeshua. That means the old has passed and the new has come. And the only way for you to renew your mind is through the word, the word, the word. It is a word of God that will transform your thoughts. It is a word of God that will transform, you know, even your feelings. You, for some, if you hated somebody, the word will teach you, you got to love them. If they put you down, if they speak ill of you, the word tells you that you need to love them. You walk in love irrespective. And the Lord said, it is mine to avenge. Your part is just to love. 
Your part is just to forgive. It doesn't matter irrespective because now you are a new creation. And so let's look at the birth of Yeshua. All right. So the birth of Yeshua, again, is Hukim. Why is it Hukim? Because it's illogical. It's irrational. It doesn't make sense that you would have a God who will leave his throne to come down to earth and that they would choose a Jewish girl, probably the age of like 13, 14, 15, and then make her his mother, earthly mother. That's illogical. Who came? It doesn't make sense to the reasoning of any human being at all. Because why would God show that way? Why couldn't he just like snap a finger and appear on earth? Ta-da! I am here. You have sinned, right? But he didn't. He did it in a way that was, that it's illogical, irrational. The human mind cannot comprehend. And so he chose. And so I say that. So Yeshua chooses a, you know, virgin. Her name is Mary to be his earthly mother. And he chose Joseph, right? So they become their earthly parents. And so God himself, who is king, leave his throne. And for nine months, that Mary would carry him in her womb. I mean, literally. What do you say to that? So now my question to you, daddies, today. If you were that father, if you were a father, well, let me backtrack. Let's say that you're about ready to get married. You're engaged to a beautiful girl that you love, but most importantly, because she loves God. She loves her parents. She's obedient because she's been studying the word, and you love her because of that heart of hers. You're engaged, ready to get married. You find out she's about three or four months pregnant, and you've honored the engagement. You didn't cross that boundary, but she's pregnant. Would you continue to marry her? And I want you to think about it because sometimes when we do our study, we have to learn to think. We can't just say everything that the word put here because the word of God says study to show yourself approved. You can't just say everything that's written there. You have to rely on Ruach Kakodesh. He is the Holy Spirit to lead and to guide you as you are studying. So I ask the question. If she was the woman that you love, you've never engaged with her in any sexual activity, but you've honored your engagement. You find out she's pregnant. Definitely is not your child. Would you still take her up as your wife? Right? Humanly speaking, some of us would say, I don't think so. Because that's kind of hard to receive. Hukim. It's hard to comprehend that. It's irrational. It's illogical. It doesn't make sense at all. Let's go to the book of Matthew 1, verse 18 through 21. And this is from, again, the English Standard Version. Matthew 1, verse 18 through 21. If you have it, say amen. amen. All right, I'll go ahead and read it. And if you have it on the screen, you can also read along with me. Verse 18, now the birth of Jesus Christ took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be what a child from the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being just a man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. Hmm. He was a righteous man. They were already engaged. He figured he might as well just wed her. And then after the wedding, then quietly divorce her. Verse 20. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus for he will save his people from their sins. All right? So now my question to you. All right, so some of you who chose not to marry, but some of you will probably choose, okay, I'll just marry her. Some of you have that kind of heart, like you will go deep, just, all right, I'll just take care of her. 
So to the man who chose to believe in that dream, right? So you're, you're going to marry her because, of course, you're going to have this dream. The angel will appear to you in a dream and say, marry her because the child she is carrying is God himself or the son of God. Would that change your perspective? Absolutely, right? So you're, you will change your perspective. Now you're going to decide to marry her. All right? So now she gives birth to this son. And in your mind, men, in your mind, this is God. This is God. She's going to give birth to a son of God. So I want to know what is your logical thinking in this, knowing that you're going to be raising this child who is the son of God. How would you raise him? How would you speak to him? How would you care for him? That you would carry this child, that you would kiss this child, knowing that you're kissing the face of God. How would you refer to him, your honor, your highness? Maybe when he's about two years old or one and he's, you're running after him, your honor, your highness. Do, do you want your bottle? What about changing his diapers? I bet you you're going to do the best diaper changing ever, right? So I'm going to flip it on you. What is the difference with the children that God has blessed you with? Because every child that God has given you is a gift from the Father. Just as Yeshua has been the gift of the Father to all of us, so are your children are the gift of God. Mary and Joseph were raised in a community that had to learn all the laws of the Father. They understand love. They understand all 613 commandments. They understand how to honor thy father, thy mother, so that they may live long in this world. They understand all those. But I'm flipping on you because I'm giving you that example that if you were the father of God, how would you speak to this child? How would you care for this child? Because now your own children are gifts from God. Mary and Joseph knew how to raise him because they had help. The angels always showed up when Jesus, when they're about ready to get into trouble, the angels would show up and he would say to um, Joseph, take the child to Egypt because the man who is after him are sending soldiers to kill him. So they've had supernatural help. Do you have supernatural help? Absolutely. The word talks about your angels, that every one of us, when we're born into this world, an angel has been given unto you. That angel, the purpose of the angel is to guide you into the right path that you will find God. Because in this world, you're going to have one vouching for your attention to be so distracted, but you also have your angels that is with you. If you don't use your angels, your angels will be sitting on the side and waiting for you. And that's why it is so important that, you know, you can't forsake the gathering because in the gathering of fellowship is where you learn the deep things of God. And the word says, study to show yourself approved. If you don't study, you won't be able to utilize all the tools that God has given you. So how would you speak to your children? If you were really careful in how you would care for the Son of God, what are your words like when we speak to our children? The past two Sundays, we minister on Lashan Hara. Can you all say Lashan Hara? Lashan Hara is an evil tongue. It's something that God does not like. An evil tongue is anyone that who's negative, anyone who's, com who's complaining about every little thing. An example is he had sent 12 spies into the land of Canaan. God said that I am giving you. God has already given them the land. All they needed to do in the 40 days that they were in Canaan, they had to come back with a good report, not a Lashan Hara report. 
God needed to make sure that they're going to be there for 40 days so that they will see the good of the land. And irrespective of any challenges that may be there, they will know without a doubt that God is with them. And all God wants is that they come back after the 40 days with a good report. Say a good report. Instead, 10 of them came back with a Lashon Hara. They came back with an evil tongue report. And that's an insult to our Father, to our Papa God. Why is it an insult? Because God already gave them the land. It's so free. He gave them the land. And what did they do? They came back with a Lashan Hara, a negative report to say, God cannot deliver us from that land because there are giants in there. We were like grasshoppers in their eyes. So it's an insult to the father because their faith has not been catapulted. Their faith needed to be catapulted. Hello, love. You can sit right there. Good to see you. <laughs> Lashan Hara. It's an evil tongue. It's a negative report and it's complaining. Because they came back with an evil tongue, a negative report for 40 days, therefore it will be equivalent to 40 years that they will wander in the desert. And even when they were wandering in the desert, they were complaining and they were murmuring. You see, God was trying to teach. He was trying to teach them to always have something good to say, to have good report. That's why we say we speak life. You have to speak life. What life are we speaking? We have to speak the word of God to our children. We have to speak positive things to our children because Yeshua or Jesus Christ have already delivered us from all things here in this world. Even though we may go through challenges, but because it's the word, it's a word, it's a word, it will catapult you. And so the word is given so that you are able to stand firm, so that you are immovable, and so that you cannot be moved. You're steadfast in your belief of the Lord. So how do we speak to our children, fathers? You are a mirror to your children. You reflect off your image to your children. What comes out of your mouth, your children will repeat it. Your actions, your children will repeat. Like the saying, monkey see, monkey do. But you're not a monkey. You are a mighty man of God. There's a huge difference. You are mighty man of God. You are precious. You are excellent. You are wonderful in all ways. You are that great role model for your children. Even though you may not be able to do the best that you can, but be mindful of what you say to your children. Because the word of God, right? He says, you know, out of the heart, the mouth speaks it. And we've said that once that word leaves your mouth, it is activated into the spiritual realm. It will go, but it will definitely come back to where it came from. The word will return. It will not return void. It will accomplish what you have spoken, and it will return back to you. Some of our members here, they love the boomerang. Right, Jackson? They love the boomerang because example of the boomerang is when you fly that boomerang, what happened? It comes right back to you. Well, just like your words. Your words have to be the word of God that when you release those words, it goes and it comes right back to you. It works both ways. It is a double-edged sword. You can use it for the bad, and it'll return it to you bad. For what you sow is what you reap. And you all know it's so common that if we tell our children that it cannot amount to anything, of course they're not going to amount to anything because you've spoken those words to your children. If you keep saying to your children that you're so lazy, congratulations. No wonder you're having such a hard time getting your children to do things because you keep repeating those words. The words are so power. They're powerful. How did God create this world? He spoke. So shall you speak those words, change those circumstances. 
Change what you do not like in your family. Change what you do not like to see in your children. Change it with the word of God and see if you will see a huge difference and a turnaround because of the power of the infallible word that you have released into the spiritual realm. So as fathers, you have a great role to play aside your wife. Mamas will always be there, but it is the head of the whole household to whom the children look upon. I want to put on the next slide. This is also Hukim. And Hukim, it's one of the most, it's one of the mystery of the 613 commandment that King Solomon could not understand. He tried to figure out what is this red heifer? What is this red cow all about? Do we have it on screen? So this was a great mystery to King Solomon. In the Old Testament, every king are required to write down all 613 laws of the Lord. So King Saul, King David, King Solomon. Every king is required to write down all 613 commandments. And once a year, they are to read it to the people. They are to meditate on this law. But this is one law that King Solomon, in all his wisdom and in all his splendor, he couldn't figure out what is this red heifer, what is this red cow. Let's go on to the next slide. In the book of Numbers 19, verse 1 and 2. Numbers 19, verse 1 and 2. If you have it, say amen. All right, probably don't have it on my screen, but if you have it, just, I'll read it to you. The book of Numbers 19, verse 1 and 2, verse 1. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and to Aaron, saying, This is the statute of of the law that the Lord has commanded. Tell the people of Israel to bring you a red heifer without defect, in which there is no blemish, of which a yoke has never come. The red heifer had to be a perfect specimen that was completely red and without blemishes. It shouldn't have any black hair or white hair. It has to be completely red. And then this red cow has to be sacrificed outside of the camp so the paradox of the red of the red heifer or the red cow sacrifice is basically the sacrificial death of Yeshua Jesus Christ the red cow represents the sacrifice of Yeshua the red is a symbolic for sin it is the blood and for the first time that when they would sacrifice this cow, the red cow, everything including its hide, its intestines, its blood, will all be sacrificed together. And then on the, with the ashes, after when everything's done, sacrifice, then they put water in there to mix it, to mix the ashes with the blood. So the picture of the priest... Here is one of the sacrificial love. It is the giving up of one's own spiritual purity so that another person can retain this spirity. In Psalm 51 verse 7, it says, Sprinkle me with hyssop and I will be clean. Yeshua willingly became unclean so that you can become clean. He willingly became impure so that you can become pure. It's his love for you and I. So the mystery of the red cow that King Solomon in all his splendor could not solve has now been revealed to you. If you've not read about the red cow or the red heifer, now you understand what it represents. It's a symbolic of Yeshua being sacrificed outside of the camp. That is to say, fathers, lead by example to our, by looking up to a one true God he is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. They are the patriarchs of our faith. 
He is the exemplar of love. Fathers, lead by love, irrespective of the challenges that you may have in your own family, in your community, at work, in your own organization. Be mindful of what comes out of your mouth. What comes out of your mouth, let it be love. Let it be peace. Sometimes we can take a step back to try to calm down, but be a great role model. If your own father was not a great role model for you, well, you have Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach. He is the ultimate and the best role model, the most great exemplar of love. No wonder John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. That is to say that we never want to assume that you have made Yeshua as your Lord and Savior. If you have not made Jesus as your Lord and Savior, Yeshua said that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Even if you give a million, it will not earn you a spot in heaven. Even if you gave billions out to all the charities and the organization to show how good you are in the eyes of the people, you are good, but that will not earn you a place into heaven. Yeshua said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That means when you come through Yeshua, you have to put on his red coat, his white coat, without blemish. That means you have to learn to walk in love. You got to speak in love. You have to learn not to lashan hara. You have to be mindful not to be complaining, not to be so negative in anything. You have to use the word of God because his word is powerful and it will change the situation. Just as you are sowing a seed into good ground, you will not see it happening overnight. But you have to water that seed. Spiritually, when we say water that seed, you are watering the seed with your prayers. You pray over that seed and you wait until it starts to grow and flourish and vibrant. So it takes you time to speak the word. Keep speaking it. Just keep speaking it. And sooner or later, you'll see the fruition of what you have been speaking upon your children, upon your family, or whatever situation or whatever challenges that you're going through. If you do not like the direction of where you're heading up, if you do not like the direction of your own family, where you're heading to, then look on to the Lord. He became that red heifer. He became that red cow that was sacrificed outside. He became pure, impure to make you pure. He gave you his best. And the word of Father says, not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. That means you have the greater one is you. For greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. I want you to repeat this prayer for me if you want to make Yeshua your Lord and Savior. I want to introduce a king to you because the king has a kingdom. When we leave this world, we will be ushered into his kingdom. But if you don't know the king, then you won't be allowed access into his kingdom because you have to come to the king. That's why here in our world, in our country, we have a president. We don't have a king because the king does not have a kingdom. Our president does not have a kingdom, but our king has a kingdom. Here is just temporary. Here is like a test that we're going through, right? We're just journaling through. After that journey, we do the best we can by the help of the Holy Spirit. You are never alone. Say, I am never alone. And I want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, dear God, I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Yeshua Jesus Christ has shed his precious blood and died for my sin. I am willing to change and turn from my sin. I now invite you, Jesus, to come into my heart and life as my personal Savior. Amen. In John 1 verse 12, but as many have received him to them, he gave them power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So congratulations to you who made Yeshua your Lord and Savior. You are now called the son or the daughter of the Most High God. 
Now the next thing you need to do, because you can't go back into the world and not connect. Connect with us. We do have Bible studies. We teach Torah on Tuesday with our rabbi. And then we have our own Bible studies on Tuesdays. Others are taking up. Um, are on Thursday so you have to connect so that you can get the deep rooted things deep calls to deep so you have to study you can't just take the word make Yeshua your Lord and Savior and then you go back out there and repeat the same old thing it doesn't work that way you have to learn to study and trust in the things of the Father amen praise God at this time I would like to honor all the fathers we want to thank you so much for coming in today um, your presence we're so humbled if I could call on our women if you could please make your way up here and now to all the fathers if you are a daddy please I would like for you just to stand at where you are sitting I want you to stand up right now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna have our women's they're gonna provide candy lays to you and then you also have a fruit basket. Each and every one of you will have a fruit basket. So we'll wait on our mommies. Thank you for having us all on. All right, so once we have our candy lace, women, if you can come up to the front. Very good. 
good daddies want to make sure all the dads are taking care of all, even as a representation. We have a representative right here. If their dad's not here, please provide them with a fruit basket and a leg. We have more back there. And all the goodie bags. Let's take care of the goodie bags. Daddies, once you receive your goodie bag, you may go ahead and take your seat. Our goodie bags are making their way up here. Do not sit down until you have your goodie bag. Very good. All right, daddies, once you have your goodie bag, you can go ahead and take a seat. cases if you came in and you saw cases of those drinks it's daddy's up to you how many cases you want to take all right you can take two three up to you take those cases you see how spoiled you are you can take as much as you want to be a blessing to your family and so daddies we honor you we salute you we thank you so much for being a blessing in all of our lives all the pastors brother mosa all amazing my team men and women of god we see families, we love you so much. And Auntie Mona, Uncle Louis, thank you so much for joining us. We love you so much. God is good, everybody. Okay, one more time. God is good. All the time. Yeah. You know, in our Samoan culture, yeah. Before we leave tonight, because this is a very special day for all of the fathers, I know we have a lot of celebration to do. I just wanted to say a few words. It's not every time we have this opportunity to... Uh, to visit your church here, Pastor Tuli and Pastor Sai, and uh, our church, Savalia uh, Fili Mu family. It's, it's a, an honor. I'm so thankful to God to have this opportunity that we were invited because uh, we weren't going to our church because we have a funeral that we need to attend after this. So uh, it's, a, it's an honor. It's, it's a blessing to be here. And to uh, be a part of, um, of this uh, Father's Day celebration. So I just want to say a few words of thanksgiving uh, before we close our, our service today. Falongo ua tau nuu mai le, nei aso, fi ia le tua lo mon mia peo tina matua, 
ya la de ya lo leo fue más suyo el trato fatsin a neyas tu watu sin a fatai fatau ba a sun al fatai ngai nga mali fatua ya tu sa ne trato fa mo mo ya lo sun ali fatai ngai nga mali fatua ya imo mo ya tu le nga nga fatai tu so tu lang al trato ma fatai nga neyas fatai le tua olo manuia pe o lua ma walo lo su i fu ala le lei so if we move our wallet to Lang or the Fanga in or Lafma Moyle Tua, I may say to sing or Lana for now, Ila or Toe Kale Sia, Lay Momolia to a lava fat tie, two sides that of fat sing and nay, nay tie of four, Lona Sapati, or the ass of four, if I long in a moy matoni tama, tatoni tama, Ya Momolia to lava fat tie, two sayo, all who are love for Anga or Fali and Nias. Ya la ini ula, ya ini ngaca fui le, oli, oli, oli kip basket, ya mesti fui le, le kuri pack, kan ini cuma, mula suai faftai, ya i lausung al fafeng ngai ngam fatua, ai mesti lau tu kali si, ai mesti tu pa, kan ini cina tu all of the sabaya file mu mothers, thank you so much for the beautiful gift today. We feel very special. But like uh, Pastor Sai spoke about how our Lord came to this world, who would ever think the greatest God will send his son in a, in a manger, to be born in a manger? Yeah, it's Sai, uh, Pastor Sai is so right. That's weird, yeah? It's, it's almost like, wow, what a, it's the worst way to bring a baby into this world. But he turned out to be the greatest thing that's ever happened in our lives. And how he has, uh, and it's a great example for us dads to continue to do our best with our families, to continue to have that relationship with the Lord, and to continue to do great things. Like Pastor Sai said, he wants us to do good things, to love people. You know, us some more sometimes. Things don't last long because every time somebody's trying to drag somebody down. But like Pastor Sai said this morning, love, love them. Let's get used to two people uh, hating us, saying bad things about us. One ear, the other ear. We just love them to death because that's what our Lord and Savior want us to do, to love our neighbor as we love ourselves. And, and I'll tell you what, it, you'll be so much more happier. So much more happier. Um, so today, uh, Pastor Tuli and Pastor Sai and the congregation, thank you so much for all of these gifts for us fathers. And we ask that the Lord continue to bless you both with not only good health, but with everything that you guys are able to, to uh, take care of this church and continue to win lives and hearts for the Lord. Uh, to all of our people who are here, uh, to, today, like to wish all of you a happy Father's Day, and um, you know, for us men, yeah, we are the head of the family, but you know, our our wives and our mothers are the heart of our family. Yeah, so as much as, as how tough we want to be, just remember the heart is where everything goes through of our body. Without the heart, well, we no more body. Yeah, we know so. Understand how important our wives and our mothers are in our lives. So thank you again, uh, Pastor Tuli and Pastor Sai and the congregation. To all the mothers who helped today, thank you so much, you guys. May the Lord bless you all. Yeah, lo falea tua. Wa fo inu jistu la sanga nei nei yaso lo toi. Yeah, fa manuia le tua. Mo wa pelo so ifu la le. Langi mai na la sunga fa fenga inga mar fa tua. Ya fa pea foi le poia ma le malu le kale sia. Ya lo fa foi le tua tato fa potonga. La yo tato tama ma tina ma tua u fa tasi. Ya me se foi yo alum fa nau. Also Pastor John. Ma lo la fa tai foi lau sunga ua ma ulunga foi ne yaso. Ina ua lo su mai ma fa tua tato te fa yaso tama fa tasi. Ya ia manuia la va tato tato fa tsinga fa tai. Praise the Lord. If I were to explain what my brother just said, in English, 
If I would have explained it in English, it would mean the same thing. But two words, no, three words, just to summarize what he said. Thank you, Jesus. To your neighbor, tell him, thank you, Jesus. And it is true, mothers, wives, you're the heart of the bank account. You're the heart of the, the loan department, the colors we wear, the food we eat. <laughs> If you're in need of an envelope, please uh, raise your hand. Ties an offering. Let me just read this real quick. And after we have our backs, we're going to collect uh, your ties and offering. In, uh, from the book of 2 Corinthians 19, it says, Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for the food will also supply and increase your store of seed and will enlarge the harvest of your righteousness. So in other words, giving to others doesn't just benefit the recipient, but it also benefits you. So you're giving, it's a blessing also to yourself. So with that said, go ahead and hold up, uh, hold your envelopes, or your tithes and offering to your heart. Let me just bless your giving. Father, we continue to thank you. We continue to honor you. Firstly, Lord, you gave us your son, Jesus Christ. You gave us every father that's in the house. You gave us our families. You gave us your love. Father, we turn for all that blessing that you have blessed us with. We want to give you a part of that. Lord, they're giving. Let it be a blessing to your ministry in every way, in every branch, in every need for your community, for this island, and for your people. Bless their families. May them see no lack in their lives but increase their finances. Increase everything that they are in need of, Father. Maybe they are struggling or they're being challenged with physical you know, capabilities that they can perform according. But Lord, we thank you for blessing them. As they give, wholeheartedly, cheerfully, bless them, Father. Pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, and we all say, amen, amen. God bless you all. Amen. Please focus your attention on the screen. Let's 
of applause for all our laborers yesterday. Amen, amen. If you could all please rise as we conclude. Praise God.